What is up? Welcome back to another video. We're here. Got a new angle of the little workbench here. Something that doesn't really get mentioned on this channel too much, actually at all, really, is testing equipment. What equipment do I use to test things and stuff? Things like that being the meter and the shutter speeds of the cameras I work on. Those are two really important things, especially if like I'm selling stuff as tested, working, all that stuff, or sealing people's cameras and then sending them back to them, tested, working, all that stuff. What do I use to do that, basically? Shutter speed testing equipment is uh, scarce and expensive. There is a video out there. I think it's, I'll try to link it right there if I can find it. 2015 maybe, which isn't that old, but like in YouTube years, it's ancient, you know, a hieroglyphic artifact of a guy working on a Yashica Electro, of all things. Ugh. All my homies hate Yashica Electros, let's just say. But he's working on this Yashica Electro and he set up an Arduino board with laser to test the shutter speeds. Is one laser and a laser receptor and there's a program written onto the Arduino board that would register the time interval in between laser and interruption. And fun fact, I used that years ago before the YouTube channel actually. I used that to create my own system, but I copied the code over and it actually did the inverse. So it was telling me time that was happening while the lasers weren't connected. So I could like extrapolate the difference in between the time spans in order to calculate the shutter speed and it hurt my brain. So then I got a hold of my buddy who knows a lot more about computer stuff than I do, which isn't difficult by any stretch of the imagination, but he was able to rework the code so that way it actually read properly. So that was cool. Before that, I was working at the warehouse. I just went off of sound. And you might think, wow, that is insane. Yes, you're correct. That's not a really good way to do it. The only thing is because I was shooting like 500 to 1000 cameras a week. I mean, it was a lot of cameras, a lot of volume. So you got very used to like hearing, okay, this is what they should sound at the different speeds. It's very hard to tell the difference in timing, especially on the higher speeds because it's so quick. Or a lot of cameras actually, usually the top speeds are like a little bit off, maybe a stop or two off, nothing catastrophic. And if there are catastrophic issues, like the shutter super dry, so it's not traveling fully or anything like that, it exhibits itself in other areas such as the shutter not traveling fully, if the timing is really off, the mirror not cycling properly, all of these other things. So it was definitely not the best method, but because again, it was like me, two other people who had no idea what they were doing, teaching ourselves pretty much. It is what it is. The greater realm of technology was very unknown to me at the time. Since then, it developed. I had the laser thing for like a month, and then I found a 3D printed module on the internet. And it's right there. You might be able to kind of see it. Right now it's holding up my display case for eBay listings and all that. But I used that for a while, and it worked really well. Did the readout on the different shutter speeds, mostly primarily the, the horizontal shutters of 35 millimeter SLRs, because that's primarily what I work on, primarily what I service. And it also has uh, EV settings on the light panels to tell if the meter is off or not, a light value. And you can set the shutter speed and the aperture and the ASA selection, and it should reach EV nine. And if it measures in those light values, then you're good to go. Then, as some of you might know, I was working at a camera repair shop for, for a while. And I got to use the like actual proper equipment. What I did, which was a little sneaky on my part, but I was curious because this thing works. I bought it on the internet for a fraction of the price of what an actual unit would cost, which they are very expensive. And I don't charge a lot for my services here. So like, you know, gotta scrimp and save when you can. But I used this to test some of my cameras and I would bring them in and test them off of the machines there. And they really worked within tolerance of everything this measured up against those. So I was like, fantastic. That's Great. All of this really culminates in the present day. Got a hold of the gentleman who runs and started Raveni Labs. And he was like, hey, I've got this tester. Do you want to make a video for it? And I was like, yeah. So I bought one. 
he sent it down. Uh, he's up in Toronto, Portland. I was like, eh, this is gonna take a while, but he uses DHL. And if you don't know, DHL is the truth when it comes to international shipping. I've never had an issue with them. The only issue I have with them is that they always show up before they're supposed to. Like, and that's not even a bad thing. It's just like, it says ETA was supposed to be on like a Thursday or Wednesday, I think. And it showed up on a Tuesday. And I was like, that's exciting. So anyway, I got the machine, took it out of the box, set it up. First of all, I gotta say, incredibly easy to set up. The machine is kind of designed in a way that you can, can rotate it in whatever space you really want. One issue I have with that machine is that it's like a giant flat thing. This though, you can make vertical or horizontal. It's a very small unit, like significantly smaller than that. Very lightweight as well, really well built and incredibly accurate. So. I'm really stoked about that. And I wanted to do this piece to kind of talk about my experience with shutter speed testing, my experience with all that stuff. An important component to this and to the greater realm of my channel and especially like my older videos and stuff where I was doing more of the repairs, which I will be bringing back at some stage. But a lot of that was for myself. Like I made a lot of those videos for people like me, for myself in the past, who I really wanted to get in to repair stuff, but there was just like, there's very limited literature out there. There was very few videos out there. Fix Old Cameras uh, does a lot of stuff like that. There is a lot of gatekeeping, I think, in any community, really, especially like niche ones. There's a lot of like exclusivity. I see something like this and I think it's like, it goes completely in the face of that because it is not only incredibly accessible, you can buy one online on his website, I'll link it down below. Truthfully, it's pretty affordable for how expensive like other shutter speed testing units are. It ebbs and flows. Sometimes there's units for sale on eBay. A lot of the times there's not. There is one online that's like verified as working and it's $1,100 plus 200 for shipping, which is obscene, but the Presumption would be that that's for insurance rates. 1100 bucks for a shutter speed unit. And I would say that's kind of about what they are. Maybe that's on the low end. I've seen them for a lot more. 1100 bucks, that, let's just say that's, because that's the only like option right now out on eBay, we'll say that's kind of the price of them right now. 1100 bucks versus this one, which is 649 Canadian dollars, 479 USD for less than half of the price you can get essentially the same thing in a smaller footprint that's newer to date there's more modern configurations you can use with it it has all of the different equipment that you need you can get uh, different sensor heads for different sizes like if you're doing medium format camera testing they have those there's a variety of things you can do to add on to this which you really can't get if you're buying like the old school ones, which again, there are very few of. So for someone like myself, who was like trying to get into shutter speed testing, I of course went with the cheapest option, which at the time was the laser Arduino board thing, which is incredibly inaccurate, especially at the higher speeds. I think the cutoff for that was like, I think one 500th of a second or one 1,000th or maybe lower. If I don't, it's been so many years, but the point being is, that's not really a great solution to the problem either. So then I had something like this, but I got that 3D printed thing on eBay and they don't have those on there anymore. So I was looking for that to see like, how much did I spend on that versus this? But I definitely spent more on this because I think that was like 630 or something like that. And then the vertical one was eight or something like that. But the Reni Labs is incredibly cheaper, but that by no means makes it a lesser product. In fact, I think it is significantly better because Raveni Labs is a well-renowned company, I would say at this stage. 
has been trying to recreate and reproduce a lot of the elements of film photography that existed beforehand. A variety of tools and pieces of equipment that he designed and sells and makes in order to kind of repopulate the film photography community. Because I made this point a little bit ago where I was talking about Right now, things are kind of like weird because there's older stuff like the older cameras, which I recommend buying nine times out of 10 because more quality, more variety, all of these things. There's older films. The new stuff is like limited. And then there's not a lot of like ancillary things that kind of exist. Like there's not, which is unfortunate because it makes the space feel smaller and diminished in a way. Something like this, the camera tester being produced is great because it repopulates that that very minimized corner of the industry. People like myself, other repair shops that don't have the kind of capital, this is incredibly accessible. Like I said, ships from DHL, so it'll be at your doorstep within like two days, pretty much, which is just insane. That depends a lot on where you live. If you live in the middle of nowhere, it's probably not gonna get to you as quickly. But enough of my diatribing. The quality of the machine itself, like I said, is fantastic. I tested it against my other machine. Like I said, I tested that against the machines from the shop uh, a few months ago, and it checks out. Like, it's spot on. So my thought, my recommendation, and I'm not being like paid by this, I did get a discount on the unit, so I feel like that's important to disclose. The agreement really is like, hey, can you make a video? I can give you a discount on the, the tester. That's it. He didn't say, make a good video. Give me a good review. He just said, I wanna see some content created about it. And this is going to be part one of many in which I discuss this tester because I think it's great. Putting the cart before the horse there, my review of this is it's wonderful. It's everything that I really wanted it to be when I first covered it in last December, I believe it was, when the news was announced that they were released in like spring of this year. If you're wanting to start working on cameras and stuff, which I do not recommend you do, this is a very dark, dark, deep rabbit hole that I do not recommend you venture in. You will thank me later. Find yourself a hobby that is more fulfilling and financially stable than this one. For whatever reason you choose to continue this venture of film camera repairs, I can't think of like a better tool to get than the Reveni Labs camera tester. And I'm not bought and paid for. I got a discount with the agreement that I'd make a video about it and that's it. There's no like, has to be a good video, has to be positive coverage. He just wanted a video. And that is just my honest to truth opinion. Uh, very easy to get working, very easy to understand. The only thing I could say is if you do wanna get one of these, look up the shutter speed tolerances. That's gonna help you out a lot. I printed one out here just for easy access, but basically it's gonna show for your one one thousandth of an exposure, your lower tolerance is gonna to be however many milliseconds, higher tolerance is gonna to be however many milliseconds. As long as it reads out in between those tolerances, you're good to go. Anyway, all that to be said, fantastic machine. Can't wait to use it more. Can't wait to talk about it more. I just wanted to throw this piece out there to give it some, to give it a good old positive recommendation to all of you watching. Uh, some people that watch these videos are like looking for repair advice or like what tools I prefer using. This is a great tool, just straight up, fantastic tool. So if you're in the market or you know someone who is, I recommend Reveni Labs Camera Tester. I'll put the website link down below check that out. All the information is on the website there, all the technical specifications and all that stuff. I didn't really feel like reading through it because I don't really want to do audio books on this channel. I could, that could be a thing, but for the most part, I think we're all good on that front. If you're interested, check it out there. If you have any specific questions, feel free to shoot those down below. Let me know. I will hopefully be having an interview with the Reveni Labs founder soon, within the next few days. So we'll put that up on the channel as well. If you have any questions that you would like me to ask him, shoot those down below as well. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Shout outs again to Reveni Labs. Thank you for making this, honestly. It is just a fantastic addition to the film camera repair experience. So thank you again, and uh, I hope this helps. Catch you on the next one.